Hi everyone, this is Arcadius and welcome back to Naval Creep. Today we'll be reviewing the final British battlecruiser, that being K2, or as I've renamed the base ship Victoria, as you can see here, and her sister ship Queen Anne. Um, so my opinion on the ship right off the bat is I really don't like her, actually. I have just not really had many good games with her. But let's take a look to see what we have. So we have 91,800 health, 32% torpedo re damage resistance, uh, only up to 15 inches of armor, and a belt of only 12 inches. So you can immediately see right off the bat that you're not going to have very good armor. And indeed, this ship can be citadeled pretty easily. Uh, especially at like angles like this so yeah armor is questionable her guns she has a 457 millimeter guns or 18 inch guns arranged in two double turrets four two double turrets aft and you have a couple options for these guns so the base ones uh these are the stats here shell velocity is pretty decent all right fire chance okay cool um, high explosive damage though crosses 10k, which is pretty impressive. But you can also go with a 4,000 pound high explosive shell as well, which does an amazing amount of high explosive damage with a better fire chance and high explosive pen. But the velocity drops down by over 100 meters per second, which kind of makes it tricky if you switch back and forth between both of these options. So we're going to try today with the base version, and I might do a separate uh, addition or another game with the 4,000 pound high explosive instead. But right now those are the guns. You have a range of 23.9 kilometers. Secondary range, it goes out to 5 kilometers. You have 3, 4, 5 secondaries on each side. Both of these are dual purpose. Or all of these, I should say. Um, altogether, not very powerful. So, still not a good ship for a secondary build. AA is actually pretty decent. Uh, if you can see here, you have quite a few large AA mounts mounted. Especially on the aft superstructure. It's, they're literally just crawling with AA mounts. And then some in the rear as well. She's not going to knock down as many aircraft of, let's say, like a Montana or something, but she can still knock a few out of the sky. Uh, let's see here. Um, speed. She goes 32 and a half knots, which is actually buffed from when she was first released, when she only went like 30, maybe. Uh, so, yeah, she does have a speed boost as well. And then normal heal and repair. Hyper focus for accuracy because you really, really want to stay at range with this ship. Um, not just because that's how she works best, but because she doesn't have the armor to be any closer. Uh, so, yeah. She's not terrible. I have seen some videos and some result screenshots of people who even do event missions with her and are still able to win. Um, honestly, it boggles the mind how they're able to do that because I do so poorly in games just against bots with her but then again maybe i just haven't figured out how to use her yet oh uh, she does also come with an aircraft she comes with three aircraft so yeah pretty good ship uh so with that last toss from the game and see what we can do all right and here are ourselves a game one carrier four battleships and two destroyers only so let's see what we can do Ooh, in an open map. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to high explosive. Because this ship is actually a pretty decent HE spammer. And it's even better when she has the 4,000 pound high explosive shells. But then again, it, I also struggle with the shell velocity at that point. And actually landing shell hits at range. Alright, so I do have health buffs and speed buffs applied as well. So keep that in mind. And let's take off. So she technically has better turning circle than both Vanguard, Hood, and Monarch. 
But, I mean, she's still really long, so don't expect too much from her. Gun angles. Um, pretty decent. Actually, quite good. So something like that. Um, I would still expect some, obviously, some pens from a midships uh, forwards. But from a midships to a stern, you would have uh, quite a few ricochets. Alright, so first we have a... We're starting to see some of the other ships here. And let's send some pens closer to I haven't figured out which way she's best used, whether if we should uh, switch between high explosive or armor piercing, just a good armor piercing, just a good high explosive, I don't know yet. Um, yeah, I don't have too many games with her, mainly because I just don't do very well with her. Right, so, let's see if we can light a fire. This green one's going to keep going broadside though. I'm going to switch over to armor piercing because I can definitely go through her side armor. I got 14,000 damage, two fires, and just in high explosive. So good high explosive damage and fire chance there. Let's see what we can do to Monarch. Uh, no fires, but still almost 10,000 damage. And let's put our speed boost on. Let's actually try and land some hits on this carrier while we can. We're also up to 38.3 knots as a large capital ship, so that's always nice. It's similar to Illinois, but Illinois can just go a little bit faster. And we got a fire. Awesome. So K2 is going to get up on my team. Now let's switch to armor piercing and show you what the armor piercing can do. Though there are still many targets I could use high explosive on. Another 10,000 or so. Another fire. But she does have 18 inch guns, so her armor piercing is pretty decent as well. Let's see what we can do against this lion broadside. Accuracy is not terrible. Yep. Almost 20,000 damage. No citadels. This Kerfris is coming at me head on. Which will tear me apart. So let's switch back to high split. Let's see. No, she's going to be broadside. Seventeen thousand damage. Also, this ship burns extremely well, and that's not a good thing. Twenty thousand damage. Two fires, two, almost thirteen thousand damage. So you can see you can get major chunk. Damages, but no real citadel hits. At least that's what I found with her. And I'm gonna switch back to explosive for this gearing here, because I feel like she's coming in close for a torpedo strike. That was thirty thousand damage on that curve first. The secondaries are going to start opening up here. The ones that are left, that is. I'm sure I've had some destroyed in the secondary effect uh, from the curve first. And then try to destroy it. 
Now let's put our fighter up so we can have a little bit more defense from the carrier. And let's see. There looks about good. A little high. But you can see, it's not just the number of fires that she can set, it's how much raw high explosive damage she can get on contact as well. Pretty decent. And another fire. And there we go. We have ourselves our first game. So let's see how we did. We have 231,000 damage, one chip sunk, 63 shell hits, two aircraft shot down, 10 fires, one module destroyed, seven secondary hits for almost 5,000 base XP. 75,000 was in high explosive, 86,000 was in armor piercing, 67,000 was in fires, and less than 2,500 was in secondaries. So I'm almost even split between high explosive, armor piercing, and fire damage for our total damage. So that was with the base guns. So now let's equip the 4,000 pound high explosive ones and toss ourselves into another game. Alright, so this time there's a few more targets. We have a carrier, uh, looks like four battleships, four cruisers, two destroyers. So good even spread. And so we already have the high explosive selected. Remember, these are the 4,000 pounds high explosive shells, which have a very s much slower shell velocity. So we're probably going to miss the first couple salvos. But let's see what we can do. I do prefer the first set because the shell velocities are so similar. You don't have to take into account any major decrease in velocity, so you don't have to change your lead for the target that much. Let's start getting over. With your 4,000 pounders, you do kind of need to get a little bit closer, unless you are really good at long range firing. Uh, for me, I have to get a little bit closer to deal the damage, but you can get like almost, I think I've had 22,000 damage high explosive salvos on battleships before. It's really absurd and obnoxious. But it's also really overpowered, and I like it. Well, her guns are overpowered, but her armor is not. Okay, so let's see here. You can immediately tell the difference. Just kind of sit there and hover, and then they come back down. And as expected, I missed the entire first shot. Alright, so let's see. She is kind of going in a straight line now. Let's see if this gets any better. That was not terrible. Two fires immediately. Now let's see what we can do against this Fargo. Accuracy is not terrible either on this ship. We got 16,000 damage just with a few high explosive shells. Looks like we're going to take a torp. Oh, no, we ran out of steam. Awesome. Alright, so Shusima. Don't think that was enough lead, but we'll find out soon enough. Yeah, I can hit the back of her for almost 20,000 damage and a fire. Now let's see what we can do against France.
11,000 and a fire. Alright, let's handle these first before we move on. So this is a bookie. What can we do to you? <laughs> 21,000 damage and two fires. So you can see how fun it can be, but you do have to be at a little bit closer range than what you would normally want to be at for this ship. Ooh, we should have fired our secondaries. Nice. You just get so much high explosive damage on this ship. I don't want to light this carry on fire if I can, because I feel like we're going to be the next target of the torpedo button. Yep, there they are. Ooh, 17,000, but no fire. I need the fire. Let's see if we can get a fire with those over. I do think we're going to take some torpedo hits here. And I don't want to give Grazia to France, so let's turn back in. Hey, we, we got a fire. Fresh torpedo hits. Fun. I think we're going to take one more. That one's probably going to cause a flooding. Hmm? Surprisingly. Not a single flooding. Awesome. I'll take that. And now we need to light France on fire again. Also probably Taiho. There we go. Now they're firing almost 10,000 damage with just four guns. Let's see if those hit. Put our fighter back up. Oh, you get it. it was a sh shatter there. That's interesting. Another fire. Something going on the bow. Mm, not enough food. Ooh, actually it was. Cool. Can we get one on the start? Well, let's turn back around. We gotta finish off that carrier. And four fires on here. Awesome. And now we have to just deal with this carrier pretty much because this cow is way over there. So we're definitely going to take some more torpedoes. Maybe we can use this island to block some of them though. Mm, kind of. Not really. There's the carrier. And an immediate fire. I always enjoy that.
Oh, we just have to finish off this barrier. I could switch over to high, uh, the other person, but I think I just want to burn her for all the torpedoes she's put into my side. We'll start by landing more fires. Alright, so let's see how we did. We only used high explosive this game. So let's take a look. We had 294,000 damage, 5 ships sunk, 78 shell hits, 25 aircraft shot down, 16 fires, 4 defended caps, 13 secondary hits for over 4,000 base XP. 159,000 of that damage was just in high explosive damage. The other 130,000 was from fires. And then secondary battery did about 4,000, which is pretty much insignificant. But yeah, as you can see, pretty good fire and high explosive shell damage for those shells. So yeah, she can definitely be a really good high explosive spammer. And when you use those 4,000 pound shells, you can get a lot of high explosive just outright damage as well. So you can go either way. I prefer the other way because it's more consistent, but I do enjoy using the 4,000 pound, 4, pound shirt as well once in a while. So with that, I will wrap up today's video. If you like the video, make sure you like and subscribe for further content. And tomorrow we will be going over the event mission that is currently out. That being for um, Maryland and Trafalgar. So with that, thank you and take care.